Yes, yeah, so, sir, so, and welcome to Vasily's Garden. Look at this tree, folks. A pink flowering apricot tree. How delightful is it? Now, I'm just admiring the colour. It's wonderful. We had some, you know, the cold nights knocked the flowers out a bit, but I dare say I'm expecting to see some fruit on it this year. Now, I did prune this in last summer, and through our pruning session, our fruit tree pruning session, We've come out to visit this one as well and uh, talking about what it needs still to be done on it. And I still have a lot of branches to remove. Why I haven't removed it is to avoid gamosas and any dieback on the tree. So whilst the tree, like an apricot tree, is dormant, you want to avoid pruning it back. Folks, I didn't come with my secateurs. I only came with my two puppies and they're around, around here somewhere. There she is. Hello. What are you doing, sweetheart? Hey, what are you looking for? Is there a rabbit in there? You want to get it? Come here. Come, this way, jump over, come on, show us your tail. Oh, just we'll jump all over, that's the way. So yeah, I've been playing with my puppies, taking them for a walk, and I've come to have a look at the tree. So this tree, now that it's sap flowing, we can go in and prune it. Well, I haven't got the pruning tools, but if you have a look at this, we've got a lot of crossover branches still in here, for example, look at this. See that's gone under that branch there? These are sitting over the top. So we need to remove some of that. Yeah, we're gonna sacrifice the flowers, but we can wait for the flowers to set, if they set any fruit, but I don't expect to see any fruit on a little wispy branch like this. These are the sort of things you want to cut back down, as well as this. This hasn't activated. It is alive, but I don't need it to activate. Uh, the sap will push in there, and I dare say it's already coming through because I can feel the swelling on the, uh, on the nodes there. So we're going to take all these back down, take away that branch there as well, and this is what you should do with your apricot tree this time of year go around and clean out. Look at these. This is what we mean. Have a look at that. That's sitting over the top there. We don't need that like that. It shouldn't be like that. And if you come across to this side, we've got crossovers. See that there? That crossing over there as well. So that's got to be clean. We've got to take this down a bit more. Walking around. Again, upright branches and, you know, obviously destroying the flowers while you're trying to film it, mate. Want to be a bit, bit careful there? Thanks, mate. <laughs> All right, come here, come here. Don't get upset. Hey, hey, hey. I'm mucking around, eh? And dead disease damaged wood, folks. It's like we got here. See, that's dead wood and damaged wood as well. Damaged wood. Come around this side. Look at this. I've just noticed this now. Bugger me. Water damage. Swelling of the branches or the trunk there and the, and the bark's cracked over. So if you're looking at that there, that is a mess. Well, it's not a mess, but that is, I've got to seal that over. So things like that, you need to scrape back and paint over to seal. Oh, well, so I've got a bit of work ahead of me, basically, so we're not going to do it now. I'm not going to demonstrate all this, just talking about it. Dead, disease, damaged, cut them off. Limbs that are facing inside, remove them as well. And it's what you do traditionally with all trees, but with the apricots, we just wait a little bit longer to make sure the sap's flowing, so you can actually do it right now without any harm and thin out any crossover branches that are rubby because you don't want any further damages. And any wispy branches, for example, this stuff here, you know, all that, like this stuff here, I don't really, that's serving no purpose, it's just sort of taking some energy out of the tree. They can be removed, you can cut them back short, uh, and you know, doubling up all these, all these laterals coming out there as well. So apricot trees, folks, clean them up now while they've got the sap flowing, enjoy the wonderful flowers if you want first, and then go in and clean them up, all as I explained, and make sure there's no split bark there or moisture getting inside to cause it to die back. This was a tree, to remind you, that was almost dead. So I'm really excited to say that we've brought it back to life, but it all still needs a lot of work with the pruning, and I know it does, but I'm happy to the fact that it's kicking on the way it is. Facilitiesgarden.com. Maresi. I haven't finished, wait, no. You've got to go to the garden centers and check out the planting mix and all that stuff that you need, and the liquid gold. So support your local independent garden centers, folks. It's vital that we keep them alive because we don't want them shutting down. I'll give you a little bit of history. When we had the garden centre in Coburg, when I first opened up, I think from memory, Jane had Jane Edmondson had hers in Bell Street. There was West Breen, there was Pasco Vale, there was Coburg Garden Centre, there were there was even Essendon Plant Farm, and I'm talking in a, a pretty much a five-kilometre radius of where we were. Logan Street Garden Centre was there as well. 
And in total from memory, the number that comes to mind was 13, maybe 12 stores within a five kilometre radius of what we were as independent garden centres. Think back, to, you know, two, two decades, maybe three decades, but at least two decades, I can guarantee you that most of you will, will remember the stores that were once upon a time ran by nice families, you know, independent owners are since gone. Now, that whether they've gone high-rise apartments or they've just been pushed out by the big chain stores, it's something that we should keep on the forefront of our thoughts when it comes to looking after our garden and that's where we should be shopping. Taking care of those because those independents like Van Loon's Garden World, Diarco's, uh, the list goes on, Pasco Vale, uh, they're all on our website. I can't remember all the stores but there's still a fair few out there that we should be supporting and that's where you'll get the best advice. Not just on our platform or other video tubers and um, Facebook likers, whatever you call us, you know, <laughs> I'm getting the dirty looks now because I don't know the right terminology of that. I'm an old dinosaur in that respect, folks, but you know what I mean. So look after the stores and support them. And, you know, we're here to give you all the advice we can. So this is a little bit of an add on for you guys. So when you get in your car and you're driving out to a store, think of an independent store first off. And I guarantee you, you'll be much better off and you'll develop long lasting relationships with them, just as I have with my guard customers in the past. From Eva Silly, Maresi, that's Vasilisgarden.com.